welcome to this video. Um, I am here to talk with you about books. This is my third time attempting to start this video over uh, because it was so, my brain was so all over the place and I was having so many ta tangents and like had so much information. I tried to make notes and organize my thoughts a little bit um, right here. So I'm gonna do my best to present a coherent timeline of events, etc. Please bear with me <laughs> if it still isn't coherent. I'm doing my best. It is over halfway through October. However, I have been inspired to try and read as many books as I can in the rest of the month and enjoy some spooky season content. I'm going to vlog from now on. However, I need to catch you all up on some of what I've already done and read since I started the vlog late, since I had the idea after I started. So I need to like bring you to present and then kind of the vlog will carry on from now later in more of a vloggy format. <laughs> Morgan Pisces Paperbacks is her channel. Honestly, she is the entire inspiration for this video, for this list, and like most of the reason I read. Um, with honorable mention to my other friend Maddie, who I'll talk about some more, who is my book buddy. This all started when Morgan, <laughs> my dear friend Morgan, <laughs> she called me and was talking to me about books she was reading and that she wanted to make a spooky season picks list for her YouTube channel themed around books. I was like real into it. Uh, I already had one of the, she was talking about books she was gonna do and then obviously I like watched the video so I came up with a lot more books but she, I already had this one book, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Uh, it was one that she had talked about in the past that she really liked and I picked it up and started like reading, I was three chapters in and I set it down, I never picked it back up again and talking to Morgan about these spooky season books it inspired me to want to read. So I did. Uh, that Saturday, that Friday and Saturday, I finished this book. And Sunday, I made a Barnes & Noble purchase. And now I'm making more of a plan to read how I'm going to read the rest of the books. So first, let me talk about, I will talk about the books that Morgan recommends from her spooky season recommendations that I am aiming to read. So one, check, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. The next one from her list that I chose is Meddling Kids, which I ordered physically, a physical copy. It is uh, another book similar to the Evelyn Hardcastle one where she had talked about it in a video and I thought it sounded so good. I was like, oh my god, I have to read that because I was a ginormous Scooby-Doo fan. I was like, I would love to read it. Sounds great. Super interested. And then I never followed through. She brought it back to my consciousness, to the forefront of my thought with this spooky season video, it being one of her picks. I was like, oh my god, I have to get that book. I want to read it. I also decided to get The Turn of the Key from her list. It's like a Honestly, you should just watch her video. <laughs> I'm just summarizing what she said. Uh, it's like a spooky nanny situation, like creepy house. Nanny comes in, family's weird, I think. I actually didn't read the synopsis very closely. I just took it at Morgan's word. Um, it sounded very classic and, and like good. I also had just watched the Blind Manor series on Netflix and very similar premise. I mean, it's a classic, a classic horror thriller premise and it was very I was excited to you know keep the vibes going so I ordered that one and then the last one from her list that I have a goal to read or listen to because I am saving that one for audiobook is Foul is Fair this is one that Morgan has also recommended to me in the past it sounded good um that is one two three four uh books from Morgan's list and then I have 
a couple more additions. So going back to my honorable mention of Maddie, who I'm book buddies with, Maddie and I decided in September to read a book together each month and then talk about it. And so we're book buddies. Kind of like a book club, but there's only two of us. September, we read Sorcery of Thorns. She had been reading it, and we were just catching up on the phone, and she was like, I think you would really like this book. I immediately was like, yes, I'm going to read it now. <laughs> and that led to t this now, today. Here we are. Earlier this morning, I finished An Enchantment of Ravens. It was picked as our October book. So, Enchantment of Ravens. October book of book buddies check I also picked out a book that I've been listening to I haven't finished it yet but I've started it's a shorter one it's called paperbacks from hell it was one of audibles included in your subscription option so it was free it came up recommended to me because it was by Grady Hendrix and I had previously listened to both a southern southern book clubs guide to vampire slang and my best friend's exorcism so that's one that I'm working on that is also on my TBR. <laughs> TBR. I'm like, I should not be using these terms. I am not, not like a Goodreads girl. But when my books arrive, the physical ones that I ordered, I'll probably do a little book haul and show them. All right. <laughs> now, I want to talk about the ones that I have read already. So to catch you all, although the rest of this uh video is going to be more of a vlog talking about the books as i read them or talking about my thoughts after i finish them i have already finished two of them so i need to catch you all up on it i know this is a lot of like exposition whatever seven and a half deaths of evelyn hardcastle 100 percent top spooky season vibes like yeah i liked i liked the way it was written i liked the process of reading it the end sort of took me by surprise like it wasn't quite what I expected but also partially what I expected like I had ideas and my ideas were like half right which I guess is you know good because it shows that there was groundwork throughout the book that you could come to that logical conclusion while still surprising um the end was just a little bit over complicated for me though I don't have any particular issue with it the sum of it all kind of a little overwrought one thing on top of the other one reveal on top of the other and it all made sense it's like I can't really criticize any any one bit because like it all it all did fit together I commend it for being very creative keep you know keep you on your toes it, it was just yeah a little over complicated and I know I just went on a bit about it but I would recommend this book I would give I would only give it four stars out of five I really enjoyed reading it When I finished it, though, I just didn't have that feeling of, oh my god, this is so great. Uh, it was just like, oh, this was a good book. I enjoyed reading it. I might actually consider rereading it. Like, I'm not sure, but it, it was good. The more I think about it, I the kind of like fond. I'm like, yeah, I, I think I would read it again in like the fall for a good mystery time. Enchantment of Ravens, overall, I really enjoyed. I do wish that I had read an Enchantment of Ravens before a Sorcery of Thor Thorns because the, the one is such, you know, an improvement on the other, uh, which makes sense because the, it's like one was the novel before the other and she learned and grew as a writer in that time. I think the flaws in, in an Enchantment of Raven, not that they were per se flaws, but just in general, it wasn't as good as a sorcerer of thorns but that's fair it makes sense i just wish i'd read them the other way around so it was more of like a building like oh my god i really like this and i read this one oh my god this one's even better instead of like oh my god this book is so amazing like oh yeah i read her next book and it's like good but also pales in comparison to the last book we read one of the main things i think that would just would have made the world of difference was that like a Sorcery of Thorns was like a solid five and a half hours longer in audiobook than an Enchantment of Ravens and that all the extra time just would have fleshed out the characters and world more and an Enchantment of Ravens was such like 
a rich concept with a trove of like these characters i wish they had gotten that extra time too it really did i was getting a little disappointed at towards the end i thought that i was like some of this stuff still isn't adding up i don't know some of these motives just aren't i, I, I was really questioning really questioning and like right up until the last second and then she like wrapped it up and i was like she she answered all my questions she she fixed my motivational issues and stuff and i was like thank you um awesome but yeah there was just like these great characters that i wish i had learned more about in the time i spent with them like gadfly like he seems so cool i wish i like knew more i know he's meant to be mysterious but yeah it's just mm. also one of the criticisms I read was that they, like, instantly fall in love, or it's too, it's, like, not earned. Which is something I loved about Sorcery of Thorns. However, I will say, in defense of Enchantment of Ravens, I don't think the book was about them falling in love. I think it was about the repercussions of them falling in love, which was why we didn't spend as much time on the actual romance. Because, like, honestly, I know she falls in love with the, like, idea of him, she thinks, in the beginning. But she says she's in love with him a couple chapters in, and we don't really see it happen. It's just, like, we're told it happens while they were, while she was painting him. And he falls in love with her during that time, too. And we, I can see how you would criticize the, criticize the romance for not actually <laughs> getting that story told, not having it shown, having it told. But I think it does make sense in the purpose of the plot and that it is a story about the repercussions of their love, not about them falling in love. That's my interpretation. I stand by it. Of course, if we had those extra five hours, it would have been great to get them falling in love too, you know? Like, we could we just could have had it all if it, if it had been a longer book. I totally think it would have delivered. I really enjoyed Enchantment of Ravens super magical i think it also worked well for a seasonal book because he's like the autumn prince prince of the autumn lands and hello it's autumn autumnal oh my goodness i'm back again same day my books came early i which i am like stoked about i have a whole nother day ahead of me like i'm just cleaning my room for fun i'm like what am i gonna do tomorrow I could watch TV or watch movies, but I really wanted to read a book because I was excited about the ones that were coming. So, here is Meddling Kids. Wow. Very neon matches my nails motif. I think I'm going to start with this one. This is the one I'm uh, most excited for. This is the one that I was like, I need to order some books. with does one today? to be honest. Eee! Okay, can't wait to start it. So tonight and tomorrow, then I'm probably gonna read this one during the week, The Turn of the Key came. I didn't realize it was gonna be so shiny. And then this one I have to save till November, but I did decide to buy this one in hardback instead of using my, I also heard from Morgan when I told her that this was the book that Maddie had sent and wanted to pick. Oh my God, it's gorgeous, wow. She was like, oh my god, that's a highly anticipated release. Wow. It's cool. Just once again, it's gorgeous. Hello. It is the night time. It is Monday. Um, the Monday after I was last filming. Um, I, or for the book video, I have my some of my ghost makeup on still because I really like how it turned out but I thought I would talk about meddling kids real quick I finished it Sunday night but um I didn't feel like filming then so um yeah meddling kids I was having some doubts I was having some doubts and then it delivered that's what, that's my main takeaway with this. Um, I think I had tr some trouble getting into it, maybe because it was third person omniscient. 
and I don't think I've read a third person omniscient in a while. I think I've been reading a lot of first person. And so it took me a while to get into the story. Also, there's just like, it just, it just took a bit. It just took a bit, I think, to get to like the real, the real meat. Uh, the romance was nice, I guess, but I don't think it was necessary at all to the plot. I think it kind of like slowed things down and I wasn't interested in it. Um, so that's a thing. But I really liked the whole like ending and how the mystery unraveled and how it went. Thought that was great. Loved it a lot. Was good. Pulled it out at the end. I would consider this for like a reread. I guess I would also give it a four. I For most of the book, I was going to give it like a three. I was just like having trouble. I was like taking breaks a lot during it, you know, where I was just like, mm, maybe I want to watch you, you know, I like, I'd get, like read 50 pages, take a break, you know, 50 pages, take a break. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. But like once, once we got into the meat, into the meat of the story, then I was hooked. Couldn't set it down until I finished it. Probably for like the last 100 pages. But yeah, there's like 200 pages where I was like, kind of dragging. But that was funny. Um, it did some, it did some weird stuff. It did this thing where it would switch to like, um, screenwriting or playwriting things with like directorial notes, uh, stage directions. I, which I didn't mind. I thought, I remember Morgan telling me that and I thought it was going to be more disruptive to the reading process than it was. It was actually pretty seamless. Uh, there's only a couple times where, for like the conversation portion, there's a couple times where the stage directions made it confusing, but I didn't mind it too much, although I still, I don't understand the purpose of it. I don't know what it was doing. Um, I guess it could be like a little bit of an allusion to the fact that it was like referencing Scooby-Doo and that was a TV show first. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's just, it's just a fun, it's just a fun time. The ending was so good. I can't, I can't say enough. It's like, um, it really like leveled out with the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Like that one, I was like, so intrigued. Like the middle was so good and like the ending was good too, but I didn't like it as much necessarily as like the overall reading process. With this one, it's kind of the reverse where it was fine, but then like the ending made it the ending being like the whole entire getting into the whole mystery towards once things actually started happening the ending being the loose 100 last pages you know like that's not exactly that's a third of the book the last third of the book really really started moving was really good so that's this one i liked it and i'm not sure i have actually i've turned the key here next to me i'm thinking about starting it tonight I'm not sure. Hello, I just finished the turn of the key. I thought I'd catch up with you all while it's fresh in my mind. Um, it's like a good haunted house mystery, sort of murder mystery turn of events. Uh, I think, yeah, it is what it is and it does a good job being <laughs> what it is i like the ending i liked the way it was explained at the end um i didn't expect it to end when when it did um i was kind of like oh like the it's upping the ante it's upping the ante and then like all of a sudden it just like ended i thought it was gonna reach more of a fever pitch um than it did but i think partially that's just because the end of the book had quite a bit of extra content so I was yeah this was how much was still left at the end of different content when it was like oh it's it's done um so that took me by surprise and yeah I don't know sorry I'm like not super enthused 
right now, um, but it was good, I promise, <laughs> and it's a good, a good haunted house mystery, definitely lots of, uh, suspense and ghostly shenanigans and, uh, theories I liked. The end, I already said that. I think it explained everything well. And I got my credit for Audible, so I'm going to start Fowler's Fair probably today. Hello! Um, it is October 31st, Halloween. Um, I'm in my festive at-home best. I got my little witch earrings on. Did some, some fun makeup. Uh... So, it's the last day of the month. I need to recap Fellows Fair, which I finished last night. Uh, I listened to it on audiobook, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> I think I might have, I think I liked it the most from, like, a critical standpoint. Um, it's one of those where it's, like, I really enjoyed listening to it, and, like, I really, really liked the writing style. I thought that was super, just like, good. I, I just liked it a whole lot. Sorry, I don't have any really good words for it. Um, it felt a little more artistic, maybe, than some of the other books. And it was intriguing and interesting and great. And like, I just saying like similar words over and over again. Uh, it was also the, the most challenging content, though, um, in case you don't know, Fallon is Fair is kind of like a Kill Bill-esque kind of story. Super interesting, super engaging, <laughs> really great writing style, but very challenging content. And for that reason, I don't think I would, like, necessarily pick it up to read again very easily. I used to do that sort of stuff all the time. Like, in high school, like, I was just, like, reread Perks of Being a Wallflower for fun and I would just like watch American Beauty and like Kill Your Darlings all the time just being like an alt indie girl but uh I kind of feel the same way about Fowl's Fair that I feel about other really good movies that I've enjoyed let's say like like if I'm on Amazon Prime Prime Video right um I loved Good Time Good Time is on there stars Robert Pattinson, my boy, um, I think he's great, I thought the movie was fabulous, it was just, like, insane, like, totally got you invested, like, riveting movie, really good, it was a good time, um, however, every time I'm on Prime, I'm like, oh, I should watch Good Time, you know what I inevitably end up watching? How to Train Your Dragon, um, <laughs> So, that's the only reason I think Fell is Fair isn't my favorite of all the books I read, even though I think it's, like, the best and maybe the one I would most highly recommend as, like, a interesting, good, like, challenging read. It's, it's not something <laughs> I would just, like, pick up to feel good, you know? I actually, I felt kind of, like, disturbed during a lot of it, because uh, it was heavy stuff, and... Jade is not, not in a good place, and not a very nice person, but, um, and neither are many other people in the book, so it's not, like, a fun, it's fun, it is fun, it's fun in, like, a, well, really murdery way, um, so, <laughs> yes, loved it, glad I read it. And the writing style, again, just to drive that home, I don't exactly know what to call it. It was like reading it, I was listening to it, so I'm not exactly sure how the sentence structure was, but it sounded like there's a lot of um, short s sentences, but also very visual. Kind of trying to compare it to like very iconic writing styles, because like I only know basic things but it's like the sentence it reminded me of like the sentence structure of Hemingway with like the visual poetics of 
Fitzgerald, if that makes sense. And maybe I'm entirely wrong, but that's what I think in my brain. <laughs> I don't even know what I would rate it. Like, would I rate it? I think I would rate it five stars. I think I would rate it five stars. I think it was that good. It just doesn't have like the easy re reread ability for me, but I think it was an excellent book. I did not finish the Grady Hendrix book, which I cannot remember the name of it right now. I started listening to it and I actually kind of liked like the prologue section more and I don't know maybe it's just because I was multitasking I didn't really like, give it a second chance but I think it would be good to like listen to during like commuting or something um you kind of jump into it jump out of it without needing to remember or really paying attention to particularly hard but since I'm not like commuting and stuff it was it wasn't really pulling me in and didn't make me want to keep listening to it in case you don't remember from the first part this is like a history of horror genre in like the 70s and 80s and how it progressed and the stuff in the prologue that like I really liked it had some more kind of straight up history from like the 60s or it talked about how like gothic novels had a resurgence and then they divided and pulled away and like the bodice river genre came onto the scene and uh, diverted and took its own path and then horror kind of went its own way because they like split because it was all kind of bundled together in one like forbidden package. That was pretty straight history but when I got to the actual book it was like extremely jam-packed with like anecdotal summaries of all these different books. I felt like there was like a lack of analysis and maybe it's just like my preference um since i'm not super into just like hearing about different horror novels or which one picking out maybe ones to read i would really i think it'd be great for that but since that isn't my purpose with it i was looking more of like the connection between the books evolving and like society and the hand in hand kind of like some and it had some of that but it was just like a couple sentences in between and book ending just summary after summary of book <laughs> it's like yeah you want to you want to cite with hard examples two to three citations for each point that you're trying to make but this had like 10 examples for each <laughs> and it was hard to keep up so did not finish that but would I would come back to in the future perhaps it was one of those that was just included in the audible subscription I it wasn't like I did, had to use a credit on it it just it's free to listen to whenever so I might come back to it bonus books so I just finished mentioned how the last one was included in the audible subscription um a, when I went on to get Fowl's Fair, a couple other you know, recommendation sections showed up t for me, and it was like spooky, cozy mysteries. And I didn't realize that these were called cozy mysteries. I actually read a lot of these type of books in sixth grade. Um, I thought they were like the natural next step from being super into Scooby Doo was to like read these little like mass market kind of ghost for any series where there's just like a ton of them. I read a bunch of the Cat Who series. Um, and I would really read any mystery that had like some sort of cat on the cover or something. Some sort of cat that like contributed to the plot line by giving away the murder in the end somehow. I just read like a ton of those. Um, <laughs> And this section came up and it was like, cozy mysteries. And the first one recommended was Spook in the Stacks. <laughs> and it had a cat on the cover and it was in a library. And listening to it, oh my God, I was like, damn, this is Hallmark mystery movies come to life. Like this is a late 20s, early 30s year old woman who came from a like career 
focused life and move to a small town to work in a library or own a bed and breakfast in the other one that we'll talk about and there's an animal companion and oh my god it was so the first one I read was the spook in the stacks or listened to and I really liked it I mean I'm not gonna say it's like <laughs> the best book ever it's like a pretty simple like missionary but it was really easy to listen to it was yeah just a fun time like a like an armchair read with a cup of apple hot apple cider uh so I liked it I liked that the cat was in it that's just like something that I enjoy personally I mean it's really kind of stupid that the animals like give away the end it's like I know Charles is a great judge of character so <laughs> that's the cat's name so this person must not be the murderer because Charles likes him and then like towards the end like someone walks in and Charles is like Shh, and she's like, oh, and, like that's the thing but um I'm all about it and it took place in a library that's in a lighthouse like oh my god how much more pervert could it be and this one took place during Halloween too so really enjoyed it um i think i'm going to read more in that series i think there's like two more of those books that are included on audible so i think i'm going to continue listening to those another one that i read was dead and breakfast which was a woman who it was starting a or refurbishing a old house that's supposedly haunted with her grandmother to open a bed and breakfast and this one was fine i don't think i can read more of this series um it did have a dog instead of a cat as the kind of animal in it but um the thing that kind of was like mad to me was the main character dealing with a lot of kind of personal challenges surrounding marriage and the end of a marriage and child bearing is that the right word being able to have a child uh and because she was dealing with those things, it, there's like a lot of kind of like judgments cast on other women in the books, in the book that they encountered. I don't know. It made me feel uncomfortable and I didn't like those parts of the book. So I don't know that I would continue reading <laughs> this series if those are like themes that the main character, oh, a whole bunch of birds just went past. If those are themes that the main character is dealing in, with and overcoming. While I think that could be a good progression to come to like to terms with with character development, it's just not something I'm keen on reading about. So that's that. So those are all the books I read in the last couple weeks of October. Um, I think my overall favorite. I, I've been like I want to say I feel like maybe I was like too hard on. Enchantment of Ravens, or like maybe I just need to sit on it a little bit more. But Enchantment of Ravens, like, really stuck with me. I think maybe I like sounded too harsh because I had like some criticisms of it. But overall, like, I like kept thinking about it after the fact, and it was just like so. I don't know. It just like resonated with me. It was just so magical. I just kept thinking about it after, like, in the weeks after I read it, which is a sign of like a really good book to me even though it might have like some criticisms that people had and I don't know if I I don't know yeah I just I think maybe it's because like I think it, maybe I liked it even more than Sorcery of Thorns even though I think Sorcery of Thorns is better maybe it's just because I haven't read books with like fey fantasy in it them much that's like my my theory is um just like that particular brand of magic while it is like a common thing that exists i haven't read many books of that there are like you know a ton of like sorcery dark academia witchcraft warlock sort of books out there and i've read a good amount of them so while sorcery of thorns was like every bit as magical as Enchantment of Ravens, I think. It just, like... Didn't stick out to me as much. Just because Enchantment of Ravens was, like... Unique. 
to me in my mind. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that's the one. I think that was my overall favorite of all the ones I read as far as just like, you know, mm, like, yay, sort of feels. <laughs> Thanks for watching and maybe check out another video or even subscribe. Mm, all right. Thanks. Bye.